Michigan Stand Your Ground law and laws like it across the country have been under fire since the killing of Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida. And here in Metro Detroit, we've had our own controversial self-defense cases like the death of Renisha McBride. Plus, we've had a rash of homeowners killing burglars with the blessing of our police chief. Benjamin Crunk. Trump is the attorney for the family of Trayvon Martin. Now recently, he's been speaking around the country to urge the end of Stand Your Ground laws. And next to him is Rick Ector of Rick's Firearms Academy. And he says Stand Your Ground is a great law. If more people practice it, we'd all be safer. But we're gonna start with you, Benjamin. And, and you actually have been going on a tour right now. You feel that these Stand Your Ground laws actually promote vigilanteism. Is that true? Absolutely. Uh, Self-defense had worked fine for over 200 years. Stand Your Ground was a solution looking for a problem. Self-defense said you had a duty to retreat if it was reasonable and safe that you can do so. Nobody said that if somebody was threatening you with deadly force that you can protect yourself. But Stand Your Ground said it doesn't have to be any reasonable thing. It could be imaginary fear. Trayvon was walking home. Jordan Davis was playing live music. They ne neither one had weapons, but yet they are dead. And the stand your ground law allows legalized murder. But what? can't well, I'm sorry, but can't juries figure out the difference though? Well, unfortunately, the police officers can't figure it out. Judges can't figure it out. Prosecutors can't figure it out. Everybody has said this is a very confusing law. When it was passed in 2006, they said, hold on, this is taking us down a slippery slope. Now we have people in movie theaters with popcorn being shot and killed. And the person said, well, I fear for my life. I was standing my ground. Rick, are these yeah. laws too vague? No, they're not vague at all. They're very clearly defined. And what we find is when we have these anti-self-defense people, when they come on and they go on these tours across the country to try to repeal Stand Your Ground, it, it really depends on misleading the public as to what Stand Your Ground and self-defense actually is. Self-defense in most states, including the state of Michigan, if you are somewhere you have a legal right to be, you're not committing a crime, and if you have a reasonable and honest belief that you're facing at least an imminent threat of great bodily harm, sexual assault, or death, you have a right to defend yourself. If you're talking about repealing Stand Your Ground, now you are forcing someone who has a reasonable and imminent threat. We don't have to look beyond recent headlines such as the woman who parked her car in the garage. She's walking down the driveway and two guys armed with guns put a gun to her head. Now we're trying to force this individual to turn her back. Repealing Stand Your Ground and implementing a duty to retreat is called get shot in the back. And when these guys come into town pushing these agendas Let's have some honest truth. Bottom line, yeah. uh, Stand Your Ground had absolutely nothing to do, no, uh, it, no disrespect, to do with the George Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin case. And the, it, their position relies on misleading right. people. Benjamin? Never trying. But, but how never do we know what really happened? Because the truth is, is, and you've said this, and you've said it all along, that we only had one man's account of what really happened, and that was George Zimmerman. Yeah, and that's such a terrible thing. If you have the person with the gun who kills the unarmed person, then his uh, stand your ground claim has a much greater percentage of being successful. And what a terrible message to send to society that we don't try to solve our problems with talking about it and being civilized. No, just take the gun and shoot the person and make sure that they're dead. Because if you don't make BS. sure they're Look, dead. Bottom line, well, Rick, let me, let me you ask you, let me you're ask saying an unarmed on. teenager. Wait, you know what, according to George Zimmerman's self-defense th theory, he was attacked by Trayvon Martin, was having his head bashed into the cement. That definitely is a reasonable and honest threat of great bodily harm, right. if not but, death. Rick, and you know what? Rick, there was a trial. Rick, hold on. I wasn't me, there. He but, wasn't but there. Have we seen, though, in many cases across the country, stand your ground being used as a as a, an excuse to kill? There is no excuse. The, the point is, is that it not only does the threat have to be imminent, it has to also be reasonable. In a court of law, you don't necessarily need to have the person who was the, the ultimate victim of a violent crime, which is different than the self-defense case, I, I, I there's also evidence, such as it was in the right, trial. Hold on, Rick, hold and on, when Rick, the jury Rick, Rick, has evidence, hold, let's respect right, their verdict. Let, you know what, let's clarify, because I think it's very unclear, and Benjamin, maybe you can help us out here. What's the difference between self-defense and stand your ground? There is a difference. The difference is quite simple from a legal analysis. Self-defense says that you have a duty to retreat if it's reasonable and safe that you do so. If it's not reasonable and safe, you have every right to defend yourself. There was no need for stand your ground. And the fact is, you see this slippery slope that justifiable homicides have went up 200% mm -hmm. since stand your ground because people are saying, I don't have to 
uh, talk to you. I don't have to try to uh, so retreat. I'm just not we had you ten, at all. ten justifiable shootings in Detroit. Actually, in I, recent I say months. it's eleven. You think it's eleven? That's correct. All right. Now, in this case, Benjamin Crump, these people are trying to. They say break into their homes. They shoot them, sometimes killing them. Do they have a right to protect themselves? Well, the Castle Doctrine has been around since the common law as well, and it's much more objective than stand your ground. It says, if I'm in my house, I have no duty to retreat. I don't have a, a duty to try to run or do anything because it's my house, and that's very objective. It changes when you make your castle the world, and any time I have a disagreement with you, I just can shoot you and say, That's I've got the thrill for my life. These people, when they come in town and they push this agenda, it all depends on them misleading the public. No, if you and I have a disagreement, that doesn't give me the right to shoot you let and me, say, hey, I a, feel afraid. It has to be here's reasonable here's a, here's a and Rex, imminent. Rex, hold on. And hypothetical. you know what? The Trayvon Martin Rex. case had nothing to do with Stand Your Ground. All right, well, a Stand Your Ground I, 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 defense I, I, wasn't Rex, even used. I'm, I'm pumping my gas in Detroit late at night. Someone comes up to me. She looks a little suspicious. Do I have a right to pull out my gun and shoot her? No, of course not, because it would not be reasonable. There has to be an articulated I, I, I thought she had a gun. threat. But well, Rick, how do you I mean? Just thought, say, no, I you can't, be, you can't be thinking she had a gun. It has to be reasonable. Okay? If you can articulate a reason that you are under a fear of great bodily harm, sexual assault, or death, you know what? Then I and only then can you use the force. It doesn't come down to the fact that it's it's kind of subjective in a way. It's hard to determine. It's not subjective when they put a gun to you. Well, it depends. Go ahead. Well, that's the problem. It is subjective. And as we saw, Trayvon was unarmed. Jordan Davis was unarmed. And when you listen to the facts of the kill of Trayvon Martin, he said he's running away. They're getting away. And then two minutes later, he has a hole in his heart. Unfortunately, he's the only one getting to tell the story because he killed the young man. There right, is, final thoughts in about 20 seconds. That's it. Go ahead. Final thoughts. You know, stand your ground. You know what? Let's be. Let's have an honest discussion as to what stand your ground actually is. Do not confuse and mislead the public. Do not use a case that did not have stand your ground and then try to attack honest law-abiding citizens' rights to defend themselves. Benjamin, yes, oh, the Benjamin, we got to go. Benjamin, the, also, you're going to be speaking the, tomorrow at Wayne State at, as well. At Wayne State University, at the Judge Damon Keith Center, the instruction in the Trayvon Martin case, the jury said they he felt he had a right to stand his ground. He had no duty to retreat because the law was confusing. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much, Pat. I appreciate it. All right. That's it for this edition of Let It Rip Weekend. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Fox News Sunday is next. We're going to see you in two weeks. Have a great Sunday.